So this is getting mixed reviews right now. This is the new Lightroom CC and it's very basic really uh, compared to Lightroom Classic CC at first glance. And I'm going to tell you a little bit how I'm using both at the moment. If I am going out on a professional shoot with all the kit shooting uncompressed raw files when I get back to the studio, I import them all into Lightroom Classic and I spend whatever amount of time it takes getting them how I want them. And they stay for me at the moment in Lightroom Classic in that catalog. But I have thousands of pictures, both with, um, you know, the professional cameras and even snapshots on my phone and I don't want to mix the two because if I go traveling sometimes I'll take some on my phone sometimes I'll take some with the camera and then I'd have one album called the same thing with a mix of pictures in it which I don't want so I've created two albums one camera which is where everything coming off for example the a7r2 would go and then one for phone now this picture, for example, was shot on the Note 8. And on the Note 8, you can shoot in RAW if you want. For this particular shot, I wasn't. It was just a standard JPEG. It's in this folder called Sync because what I've got it set up is Lightroom Mobile CC on my phone is set to upload all my photos to the cloud. Um, I've got quite a big data allowance on my phone so I have it set to do that across 4G. If you don't have a big data allowance you can get it set to only work when you're on Wi-Fi. But uh, my thinking is if I'm on vacation and I've taken a hundred pictures that day they're all up safely on the cloud so if I drop my phone or it gets stolen later in the day all my photos are constantly getting sent up to the cloud. At the moment, I've got a 100 gig allowance, but you can go up to a terabyte, and I think you can go all the way up to 10 terabytes. And as time goes on, these plans are just gonna get cheaper and cheaper. So I understand, guys, for your professional shoots, Lightroom, CC, Classic, have it all on the hard disk and then backed up to your NAS or to the cloud as well. You're gonna be using terabytes and terabytes for all those uncompressed raw files. I get it. Lightroom CC is gonna be a big change for you in that respect. But for on the go photography, this, I'm loving it, honestly. When I took this shot, I actually edited it all. Oh, there was a bench. Um, near here and I just sat down I just spent five minutes editing it take a drink it was so much fun just to get it done and edited and uploaded to Instagram within five minutes of this picture being shot and everything that I'm going to show you here you can indeed do on the mobile version as well even presets all you do with presets is you take some pictures for example let's go into my presets folder all i did was i even left the lens cap on on this occasion i just took 12 pictures and i have done my settings on these presets these then show up on the mobile version and you can just copy and paste your presets to any pictures that you want although i'm sure a way of properly importing your presets on the mobile version is coming there are still certain things that you can't do on the mobile version. For example, if you were doing a panorama, it doesn't have the ability yet to stitch them all together. But that isn't something I'll be doing when I'm just out and about and trying to get everything done on the go. Another thing I love about this Lightroom CC is it picks up where you left off on every device. So if I just do any change on this, like I'm not entirely happy because I didn't get it completely straight and that will just send my OCD into crazy meltdown and if I leave that now 
I can go and pick up my phone and that'll be like it is now. So it's remembered every single step that I've taken. The auto feature, it works better. It's never perfect, but it works a lot better, I find, than Lightroom Classic. And just depending on, on how you work through it, you have a lot of similar stuff available to you. If you shoot in RAW, you can apply your lens corrections here as well. So I'll just basically show you on this one. It was just so easy. I just used a preset basically. Let's just revert it back to the original, which you could do with Shift and R if you wanted to do that. And back, let's get it straightened up slightly. There we go. That straightened it up. And you could crop that in a bit more now. Let's do a bit of a uh, Tony North crop on it and get that in here a little bit. Round about there. Here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. And then just a little bit more straightening to there. Okay. So there you go. Rough idea. And then let's just have a look at a preset. I quite fancy a bit of black and white. Now this is one from Peter McKinnon's set. I like them. People, some people don't like presets. Some people do. Some people pay. Some people don't. I fancy the dabble. It's never perfect, but I like to use it to get an idea of how he's got his presets done. And then I, I work from it. And if I like it, I like it. And if not, I do my own so but on this occasion I kind of kind of liked actually how it came out and there we go let's go on to the view and you can go back now to the grid and there you have it and I just slapped that straight on Instagram if you want to have a look at it go onto my Instagram and take a look you can see that that is syncing back to the cloud. It's non-destructive. So I still have the original photo. The cloud just remembers exactly what I've done. So it's not for everyone, but it has opened up a lot, especially with these new phones coming out. I know that you're never gonna replace your three, four, five thousand euro camera with a phone, but at the same time, you don't necessarily have your camera all the time and if you don't have your camera with you then your phone is indeed the best camera that you've got and with like the, the Note A new iPhones I think you can do a pretty good job and having the ability especially on the Note because I can use the stylus as well so just having the ability while you're out and about just to, just to sit down five minutes take a drink and just do a quick five minute edit and just have it all uploaded and ready to go and synced. I think it's gonna be the way of the future as time goes on. I think Classic will become CC. All the features will become built in and we're just gonna go cloud-based as the internet speeds progress. I mean, five years ago, we wouldn't have thought about anything like this what are we going to be like in another five years time that is the question so i know it's getting a lot of hate right now and when i first opened it i was got to admit i was just like oh but i just i didn't bother importing anything i created everything from the beginning i set up brand new catalogs just to try and get a feel for things and i started just only importing a few photos and as i started to get what it was doing and what it can't do more importantly learning its limitations i suddenly thought this is perfect as a library to organize all those camera shots that i just have scattered on all my hard disks that i never look at and when i imported them all in into my new library just to have them all nicely organized and i went through and just tweaked a few as i was going through and it it's kind of opened up really a, a new kind of camera phone shooting style that I wouldn't necessarily have gone down that road if I had to go into Lightroom Classic 
for everything, then you think, well, if I've got to go into Lightroom Classic, I may as well just do this with the AE7R2, uncompressed RAW to go to all that trouble. But having such a light solution makes you think, ah, oh, I can get this shot in two seconds and get it up to Instagram or Facebook, whatever that may be, and all on the cloud. So that's a little bit of how I got that photo onto my Instagram. If you'd like any more on this, let me know. And as usual, guys, it's been emotional. <laughs>